What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn how to handle cookies when working with selenium and doing web scraping so let us get right into it. All right, so the idea is the following. Let's say you want to do some web automation task using Selenium. And let's say in order to do this automation, you need to log into a service or you need to do some initial setup process. For example, you need to change some settings or you need to uh, change some parameters and only then can you get started with the automation procedure. Now, chances are that you don't want to have to run through that process every single time you call the functionality or every single time you run your script. If possible, you want to stay locked in um, and if possible, you want to keep the settings the way they are. And the way our ordinary browsers do that is using cookies. So cookies keep you locked in, cookies store information about a session, cookies store information about uh, certain settings sometimes. And this is super important if you want to optimize your web scraping or web automation procedures or applications. And this is what we're going to learn how to do with Selenium in this video. So how can we handle cookies? How can we export them? How can we import them so that we don't have to constantly log in and log out of services? So we're going to do that using a sample application or a website called setcookie.net. So this is not an actual website that does anything else but setting cookies. But imagine this to be some web service that you want to write an automation script for. So you want to log in and then you get a login cookie. Of course, in order to see which cookies you have, you have to inspect and you have to go to uh, storage and to cookies and then you're going to see the cookies. This is in Firefox in Chrome. I think it's quite similar. You have some other tabs here, but you basically have to just see what happens when you do it with your browser. But on this page, for example, what happens is I can type some cookie name. Let's call this some name. Um, and then cookie value can be some value, for example, and then I can just go down here, submit query. And you can see, I sent this to the server. Now if I restart it, or actually, if I just go and press enter, you can see it received the cookies, some name equals some value. And if I go to inspect, and if I go to storage, you can see I have some name, some value. So this is what happens in this case, on this page. Now in an actual login page, you would log in with your information. And you would probably see some other cookie here that keeps you locked in. It doesn't really matter what the cookie exactly is, it's important that you know what the name is. And it's important that you know, uh, what is happening once you log into an application, and this is going to be different for every single application, this is going to be different on social media platforms on some uh, paid services, no matter where you lock in, usually you're going to get a different set of cookies or a different combination of cookies here. The important thing is that you figure out what is happening so that you can mimic the behavior and you can export the correct cookies in your automation script. So what we're going to do first is we're going to install Selenium. So pip three install or pip install Selenium and also web driver manager, which is not, um, which is optional. If you don't want to use a web driver manager, I just prefer to do it. Otherwise you have to point to the um, directory or to the path of your Chrome driver, if you want to use Chrome. So what we're going to do now is we're going to import uh, time, we're going to import pickle, we're going to import time mainly for sleeping. So for waiting, we're going to import pickle to serialize so to export uh, the cookies into a file. And then we're going to also use pickle to load the cookies from a file. Um, and then we're going to also say from Selenium, we want to import the web driver from selenium dot web driver dot chrome dot options. Now this is an optional uh, point here. So you don't have to do that. I'm just going to show you how to do that in case you want to, for example, deploy your automation script on a server, you want to use some options to make it basically run without a graphical user interface, which is also possible. Um, then we're going to say from selenium dot web driver dot Chrome dot service, we're going to import service, and then from web driver manager, Chrome, we're going to import Chrome driver manager. And now I'm going to just say driver equals uh, web driver dot Chrome. And here now I'm going to say service equals service. And I'm going to load from the Chrome driver manager, um, a Chrome driver using install. So on demand, it's going to just get a Chrome driver manager. Uh, and now here we can add the options, uh, which are going to be Chrome options, which are as I mentioned, um, optional, no pun intended. So Chrome options is equal to options. 
and you can add a bunch of different options here. The ones that are relevant for uh, server scripts are the no sandbox and headless options. So I can add them here. Chrome options equals or not equals uh, Chrome options dot at uh, argument. And then you can add the argument, for example, dash dash no sandbox, and then dash dash uh, headless to basically run it without a graphical user interface. Then you can also use disable def SHM usage. These are just some small things that you might want to do if you want to deploy this on a server. I'm going to delete them because we're going to run this here on my desktop PC. Um, but this is usually the combination. Maybe you want to use verbose to see more information. Uh, these options are what you want to use if you're deploying this into a Docker container and then on a server, for example. And this is not a C, this is a V. <coughs> But in my case, I'm just going to leave options empty or I'm going to comment them out so you can see them here in the code. And then you can just pass the Chrome options here. All right. So this is the driver. Now this is what we use to navigate to URLs. And then we can set the URL to be equal to HTTPS and then set cookie.net. Now, what we want to do is we want to cause a cookie to be set because the setting of the cookie is going to be done by the website. We don't have to set the cookie ourselves. Uh, the website is going to set the cookie. The only thing that we want to do is we want to export it once we're done and we want to import it for the next session. So what I'm going to do right away here is implement a logic for loading a cookie in case we already have a cookie file. So right now this is not going to work because we don't have a cookie file. Um, and because of that, we're going to have a file not found error. Um, and in this case, we're going to pass here as well. But what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to load using pickle a cookies pickle file, which I'm going to create at the end of this code. And if it exists, we can load the cookies from there. So we're going to do here with open cookies dot pkl read byte mode as f. And then what I want to do is I want to say cookies is equal to f load. Oh, sorry, not f load pickle load f. Uh, so this loads the cookies from the file. And what we want to do now is we want to iterate. So we want to say for cookie in cookies driver at cookie. So with the driver at cookie function, we can easily just set cookies. And here, by the way, you can set whatever you want, but we're going to set the cookies that are part of the cookie jar that was uh, that, that is going to be exported at the end of this uh, script. And then we're going to navigate again. So driver get, we're going to navigate again to the URL. Now what's important is we want to also navigate to the URL before we do that, because we need to be on this URL to be able to do that. So we're going to say driver dot get URL up here, then we're going to load the cookies, we're going to set the cookies, and then we're going to get to the URL again, just so we refresh it and we have the cookies there already. In case the file is not found, which is going to be the case the first time we run this application because we don't have the cookies yet. In case we don't have cookies yet, we're going to print that we don't have any cookies. No cookies found. Uh, yeah, let's do it just like this. Then we're going to go again, get URL. I don't know if this one is necessary, though. Probably not. Maybe we can delete this. Uh, we can wait some some uh, time for this to load because this is going to happen very quickly. It's going to try, it's going to fail. And then uh, I want to wait for the content to be there. Of course, uh, the professional way is to wait for certain elements to appear, but I don't want to make it too complicated here to focus is now on cookie handling. Um, but what we want to do now is we want to get the elements that we want to interact with. And again, this is going to be different for every single website. In this case, you can just right click uh, on the text box here, for example, inspect. And then you can see that this is an input field with a name name or with an ID name, you can go either by ID or name, I'm going to go with name. Um, and I want to get this input field that has the name name. And then I also want to get the input field that has the name value. And then what I want to do once I uh, write the stuff in there is I want to get the button uh, or in this case, the input with type submit. And if there's only one, I'm going to find this one. If there are multiple, you have to somehow say I want the first one or something like that. Uh, but in this case, there's only one. So what I want to do now is I want to say name input is going to be equal to driver find element by name, and the name is name. 
and then I'm going to have the value input, which is going to have the name value. And then all I have to do is I have to put in the values. So I have to, to send the keys. Um, and by, by the way, I, I actually said before, you have to look at what the browser is doing. You don't even have to do that because you just do the behavior that is going to cause the cookies being set. So you don't even have to uh, watch which, which kind of cookies are being set. You can just go through the behavior that is going to set the cookies automatically. So this is even simpler because you basically do what you do with your ordinary browser and you save the results of that. So name input, send keys. Let's say we want to send here some cookie name. <clears throat> and down here, name or value input, send keys, some cookie value like this. And this is now our login. So in your uh, application, this would be the username input, the password input, and then you would just uh, add username and password, load them from environment to be safe. Um, and then you just click the submit button. So the submit button is going to be equal to driver find element, I'm going to use x path here to say that I want to have an input <clears throat> input with the type submit. So I can do that here with an add type equals submit like this. And since there's only one, I'm going to find the one. And then I can just say submit button click. All right, and then we can wait for two seconds. And after this, we're basically done. And what we can do is we can export the cookies into a pickle file. So the next time we can actually find it. So what we can do now here is we can say with open cookies pickle in writing byte mode as F, we can say pickle dump into this file, driver get cookies. So we get all the cookies from the driver, we dump them into F, which is our file stream cookies pickle. And then what we do is just to see some results, driver get URL, and then we're going to wait for five seconds just so we can look at the page. All right, and that's it. That's basically how you do that. I can run this now and you will see the behavior is going to happen. So it's starting, it's opening up the website, it finds the fields, it sends the form. It reloads the page, the cookie is set, I'm waiting, it's going to close in five seconds. There you go. And now we have the cookies pickle file. And now I don't even have to run through the process anymore. Because now it's just going to realize, okay, we have cookies already load them and jump immediately to the section where we load the page. And you're going to see that the cookies are already set without me having to do anything. And this is the equivalent, of course, in your application, if you want to use this for something that needs a login, you would already be logged in. So again, even though I said it in the beginning, it was not entirely correct, you don't even have to look at what is happening, you don't even need to go into right click inspect or anything like that, you don't even have to, to see what kind of cookies are being set, because all you have to do is you have to mimic the behavior that you would do naturally or manually in your browser, and then export the cookies and load them the next time because that's exactly what you do in your browser. So uh, it's it's not even a different kind of behavior here. So yeah, this is how you handle cookies in Selenium. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.